Hi there everyone. Another wholly independent review here with Bruce and I back in the man cave. Filmed this a little while ago but uh, apologies for the delay and uh, thanks again to Hike Micro and Elite Optical for the loan of this superb kit. And speaking of superb kit, the Hike Micro Panther PQ50L, the last part of that video will be coming very very soon. Any of you want to keep on on top of what's latest in the world of night vision and thermal, you'll find the link in the description down below to the UK night vision forum. See you all on there. Cheers. What we're going to do now is Bruce is refitting the T19C, adding the front add-on adapter, taking off the eyepiece. Bruce is just showing that it has the same magnetic Th This is sensor. exactly the same adapter I think that it comes with it. The reason I mention this, Bruce, is when I first unboxed this fella, it was in add-on mode and it hadn't automatically switched off add-on mode. I had to manually go into the menu down the left side and deselect add-on mode. So it wasn't auto-sensing the magnetic catch now, of the, the add-on adapter. This is my box for my TQ50C. Right, okay. And this is the eyepiece adapter I got with the TQ50C. Yep. And it looks identical. Okay, yep. To both. Okay. okay. So okay. That, that I I would expect that to be identical for, for yeah, both. And yeah, yeah. And obviously I'd expect the scope adapters to be identical. Yes. Okay, so you put that one, you put yours away and we'll keep I'll them separate. I've brought my two day scopes along. So probably going to take the two adapters off here. These are adapters from the oneleaf.ai NV100 I am reviewing. So I'm still reviewing that, not finished, but there's been a few, one or two little uh, foibles I've got to get used to. So we're going to take the two adapters off. You can see there's a 45 mil adapter and a 42 mil adapter. I've brought the Eagle Vision Cam multiscope adapter with me that we reviewed previously. And we're going to film with the PAR 007. We're going to film through here via the Eagle Vision adapter. This is the Discovery Scopes HD34. So it's got a fat 34 mil tube body, 3 to 18 by 50 first focal plane. And I don't know if this will be any good with the T19C because it's minimum on minimum three mag, as you'll have seen from my previous video when we compared scope adapters, Bruce and I in this same man cave. On three mag, the reticle is tiny. The stadia are almost in, almost in, invisible in the center of the screen. Whereas this Hawk Vantage 3 to 12 by 50, it's not ideal because it's not side wheel focus. It's objective parallax. But that aside, it's 25 mil tube, second focal plane, 3 to 12 by 50. So we're going to do a compa comparison of two very different day scopes through the Hick Micro T19C and uh, compare them for you in add-on mode. Obviously, the T19, once it's mounted on the front, mm. is just recording and there's, there'll be no crosshairs because it's downrange, if you like, of the reticle. Whereas we're going to record via the PAR 007 through the eyepiece, including the reticle. So you'll see, you'll see both. So Bruce has got the T19C. He's added I've got the, the adapter fitted. You've got the adapter fitted for the front add-on. One thing I'm immediately noticing and different from the TQ50 is it there's a different firmware here because with the TQ50, when you attach the eyepiece, that is detected and the firmware automatically changes to the add-on version of the firmware where the menu comes down in the middle and there are certain functions you don't have. You don't have zoom function. Right. But with the TE19, you have to manually switch it into um, add-on mode. Yes. And one of the things that happens when you change from add-on mode to scope mode is the amount of the display being used changes. Yes. Uh, in add-on mode, the display, the available amount of display being used is reduced. But because this only switches manually, when you put the adapter on, you still have the full display. Yeah. And when you go into add-on mode, the display contracts. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see when it's attached to the scope, how much difference that actually makes. Oh if yeah, can, abs absolutely. If you can actually see more leaving it in scope mode, or if it, you know, what it looks like in scope mode and add-on mode. So we can try both. We can try Whereas that. with yeah. the TQ50, we couldn't we actually couldn't physically that. try that. It's automatic in the TQ50, there's nothing right. you can do. Right, but okay. TQ19, no, you, you, you have to manually change it from one to the other. Right, okay. It may be that you, to get the best out of using it as a front add-on with a scope, that you have to put it into it could be. add-on mode. But yeah. we'll find out. It's interesting. Yeah, so it's cutting-edge discoveries here. Yes, 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 yes. So what were you saying, Bruce, what you and Mike discovered? Okay, well, the, the hick in front add-on mode 
requires that you first of all attach the eyepiece to yeah. the body of the scope and then you've got this scope adapter that actually goes onto the scope yeah and then basically you just you screw them together yeah like that that's it in front add-on mode yeah right now normally for quick attach and detach you would simply flip this lever and the whole thing would come off yeah right and then you would simply put it all what we found out was that if you do that it doesn't hold zero particularly well okay um you never get this exactly and what, what right. sort of range are we talking about well we're speaking 100 yards right we were speaking 100 yards make these treble two and we had it, we we set the whole thing up we had it zeroed mm -hmm. and then we we took everything off put it back on again yeah and there was a, a a sign as enough sh enough shift yep. in the zero that you wouldn't be happy. No. Okay. Right? So it was significant. So, so what we what we discovered was that if you rather than taking the whole thing off, so that's that's the zero being affected because the, 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 clamp, the this clamp is not going on exactly in the same place every time. Right. So basically, although your scope's zeroed and is solid, the the Hick Micro is off at an angle slightly. Yeah. And therefore. Your, your yep. point of aim is off slightly. Okay, that's interesting. So what we did, what we then did was we left the scope adapter on the scope and then simply attached and detached this part. Yes. Be and now because this is a much better fit, that locks in. Yeah, yeah. And you turn the collar. And you call it you know, that. Counterintuitive. It's counterintuitively. It's not a right hand thread. It's a left hand thread. Okay. But that is a much more accurate fit a secure fit secure fit there's no secure. movement here and we had no loss of zero brilliant leaving the scope adapter on on the scope and removing the body with the eyepiece you don't lose zero right um and i believe actually that the heck recommend that this is how you do it as well right okay i think that's a recommendation okay now the, the only from a sort of practical point of view the downside is the scope adapter, that hole is obviously smaller than the objective lens of the scope. Right, yes. So if you're using a scope that you want to get for, for low light, your dawn and dusk, then you're limiting the amount of light that can get into the scope. Right, right so okay. you're, you're kind of ju reducing the light gathering abilities of your scope in normal day scope mode. Right, okay. Um, also, you've got this unprotected thread here as well that could potentially get damaged. So okay. you, would, you would want some sort of protective plastic ring maybe that would fit around there yep. so that that wouldn't get damaged when when this is not attached yeah so if you want if so if you, you want this to the hick to be off for a length of time you maybe would take this mount this fella but then you do a zero check before you fight it live yeah. play again yeah i think so i think yeah. so okay um cool. if, but if you're if you're using it in add-on mode regularly then it's going to be more accurate to leave this right on, leave, leave that intact leave that on the scope Brilliant, okay. There are other adapters available. Um, a company called Smart Clip do an adapter that f works with the hick. It replaces this bit with a with an adapter that's a much snugger fit onto the objective lens of the scope. You've got to give them the diameter of your objective. Ah, right, okay. And it's what they do. Product they, specific then? Yeah, it, and it's, a, it's within two millimeters. It's a tight fit. Right. Everybody tells me that that holds zero. Brilliant. Um, and that would possibly be it but but you're spending look at maybe another 150 quid for the for, okay. for, for a smart clip adapter right okay so, so that's what you've learned with you and mike return to zero it's best to leave the objective down. lens scope adapter on the scope locked in place now you did tighten it up so it will be snug the pad 007 is recording right now video through the scope and we, Bruce has pressed record on the Hick Micro T19C, so we're hoping it's recording. Although, with the day scope recording a smaller amount of the thermal display, we can't see the record symbol. So we're not 100% sure if that's recording, but this is recording right now, and basically recording for you viewers the image you would see through the day scope. So it's unusual in that we've got the, the Discovery on minimum mag, which is a tiny faint reticle in the center of the screen because it's a first focal plane scope. We're looking at Bruce's usual air brick. You can see in the distance, way over here, that's the Bruce's air brick on his distant neighbor's roof ridge line. So we'll do some optical zooming with the day scope. 
We're recording it through the, the image through the pod, so you get to see what the shooter would see, and uh, we'll see how it goes. This is Bruce. I'm going to be zo zooming the Discovery scope to see how much of the 3 to 18 times optical zoom he can use. Bearing in mind, the, the scope is actually looking at the T19C thermal scope's display. Here's some raw footage from the Hike Micro T19C on the front of the day scope. So it was indeed recording, and we have the ridge line at 98 yards on the left, which Bruce uses for uh, day scope tests and night vision tests. And we have the four convenient visible air bricks on the front of one of his neighbors across the way at 53 meters. Okay, we're at base magnification at the moment. I'm starting to increase magnification now. And I can just about read the numbers on the scope reticle, you know, the two, four, six, eight, ten numbers on the scope reticle. Um, I can still see the air brick on the... I can just still make out the air brick on the roof. By the way, have you focused the scope's side wheel? Yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Carry on. Yep. Well, they, that doesn't make any difference. Oh, scope right. side wheel, because the scope is basically just looking at the display. It doesn't make any difference. Right, okay. What am I at now, magnification wise? Uh, I'm starting to see quite a bit of pixelation. I I, yeah, I'm about times six at the moment. Right. Which is kind of what I'd expect given what I've seen with other scopes. Yeah. Uh, I'm starting to I'm starting to notice pixelation on the display. I'm starting to start to see the pixels, the display pixels. Yeah. You can either you can kind of look through that and still see the image, see what you're looking at the target. Yeah. But as you increase the magnification then the pixelation becomes worse and worse. Yeah. And um, the image becomes more and more blurred. Right, so if we back, this is an entry level thermal scope though. If we back off the zoom to back to three, shall I go and stand on the other side of the street over there and give you a thermal target? Aye, okay, do that. How far away are the air bricks? Can I have a quick look and see where? Aye. No, don't, don't bother lifting it up. Okay. Oh, it's, so it's, you can hardly see them in your eyes. Oh yeah, with the naked eye, they're not. They're not immediately there because they're same. Is, it, is, that, within, is, that, is that below the harling? But yeah, they're just on a joint line between the harling and the, and the brickwork. Oh right, okay. So that's probably forty-five meters, something like that. Yeah. Shall I just go across the street? All right, okay. There's my other crutch. Oh, sorry. I'm about to go for a walk, and I realise I need them both. Okay, I'll go for a walk, and then we'll do the same with the other scope. A little bit. Perfect. That's you bang in the middle of field of view. Right, we're increasing this from base. Yeah, okay. Okay, it's maximum zoom. That's Ross's hand. Four inches across. Okay. Yeah, come back, please. Yeah, okay, you can come back now. So this is the Hawk Vantage, th yeah. sorry, 3 to 12 by 50, isn't 3 it? 3 to 12 by 50. The problem is, the objective is big. Yes. So the, the typical adapter you would get that's designed to fit 50mm objective scopes simply won't go over there. Right, right okay. But just so happens, <laughs> I've got a 60mm adapter which was bought to go with one of my other scopes. Right. That will fit. Yeah, so right. that's a tight so we'll, snug fit. We'll be able to use that. The, the big problem with object, adjustable object scopes is, as you focus, you yeah. get, the adapter's going to turn. So yeah. we're probably going to have to work it as a fixed focus at one distance. And Which then was 50, I've, well, 53 I'm, metres. Or do you want to put it for the air brick? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll so, the, so those those warm bricks in the wall are okay, 53 we'll set, metres. Okay, we'll set it for, for that. Okay, well, that's, actually, that's not bad for alignment. 
Okay. Um, and then we'll tighten that up like that. So that's tight. Excellent. Okay. So you've got the Eagle Vision Cam adapter on the Hawk Vantage scope. So the pad, you've got it focused on, across the street and you're going to go on. I'm now going to attach the Hick, Hick Micro T19C to its adapter. What we've done is, Bruce has done is preset the parallax on this Hawk scope because it's a parallax adjustable object objective. Uh, scope he's preset the parallax to 50 meters just so it should be roughly focused because as you just saw the air bricks across the street which are glowing are 53 meters away uh, so 53 meters to the air bricks i mean the air bricks are bully size targets really you think they're great yeah oh, oh i mean yeah. that should have been yep and how did the reticle look you went up to six six with mag was about getting a bit pixelated but was the reticle visible-ish oh you can't mean i just but I mean, you can you can aim that way from there. Yeah. Okay, just. Just. Yeah. Can you get six? Yeah. You can you can aim it here. If I put it to six. Yeah, it's yeah, it is. You can you can definitely still aim with it. It is a very fine reticle though, but then it's a first focal plane scope, so it has to be. I mean, I didn't buy the first focal plane scope to use at three mag, really. Yep. Go for it. So we've started recording on the PAR 007, or we resumed recording, I should say. Um, so. Yeah. So the the hawk scope is set times three, and the image is essentially the same as it was in the discovery at times three. The difference is, of course, this is a second focal plane scope, so the reticle is much clearer. Yeah. It's the same. The reticle is the same all the way through the magnification range. So, yeah. So you can see the reticle much more clear, clearly than you could with the Discovery so at times three. If there were rabbits at that air brick, they'd be shootable, yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I've got I've got the crosshair on that red brick now. In fact, that brick, that air brick at fifty three meters c covers one mil dot either side of the centre of the reticle. Excellent. Okay. Exactly one mil dot. No, I take it as a mil dot scope. Pass. There's dots on the reticle anyway. I think I think it probably is mil dots. Yeah. Yes. Well, if it's if assuming it's mil dots, then then that air brick is two mil dots wide, at fifty three meters. Fifty three meters. Okay. In base magnification, obviously it's going to get bigger as I increase the magnification. Uh, at You're on six. I'm at six, and again, it's about the same level of pixelation as we saw in the discovery, because everything's working the same way, but this one only goes to twelve. So you're on 12 mag now. I'm at 12 mag now, and yeah, I mean, you, you, if that was a rabbit, it'd sick, you know, you'd be able to pick your spot. Right, excellent. So, uh, I mean, your field of view is really limited, but if a rabbit was sitting there not moving, you could zoom up in it. But be, to be truthful with you, you wouldn't need to. So you can shoot it on three mag. Aye. Maybe you're on four right now. Aye, I would say you can. Probably I've got I've got five. Yep, you're on five. I I would say five five would be the, the sweet spot. Right. Okay. In terms of a big enough, clear enough size and clarity. So you're getting, you're getting you're getting clarity on the target 53 meters downrange. Yep. And yeah. And you're getting clarity via the thermal. Yep. Yeah. I haven't got too much pixelation. The reticle's clear. The target is. It's not just a white blob. I can see it's definitely a square. I mean, yep. if, I, if that was a rabbit side on, I'd be able to see the head. Right. If that was a rabbit side sitting side on, I could definitely see the head in the body. It's too, you know. So you can do headshots. You, you, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think you probably, I think you probably could do a headshot. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So we've just proved basically that the Hick Micro TE19C three roll or triple roll thermal spotter scope add-on is good on both first focal plane and second focal plane scopes uh, easily for rabbit duties out to 53 meters um yeah which is sub 12 range yeah oh yeah sub sub 12 ranges is like sort of 30 35 40 meters yeah so and no, remfire cool. fac air rifle range would be 53 meters easily yeah um yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh we've basically proved that and we've recorded the view all along through the par 007 via the Eagle Vision cam adapter. So job done, I think. Yeah. For, as an add-on mode, I think we've done I think we've done oh. what other reviewers have not done. Yeah.
I'll, t I'll tell you just the front. What I'd like to do is take the adapter, take the front adder off, put the eyepiece back, putting the, the normal eyepiece back on, and look at those same air bricks. Set it up in scope mode, in other words. Right, right yeah. Stick out the Picatinny rail here and look at those again in pure scope, pure thermal scope mode and compare how. I mean, I, as I'm saying, I, you, if, that, if that air brick that size was a rabbit, you could shoot it. Brilliant. Yeah. Properly tight, so that's the Hick, T, Hick Micro T19C back in scope mode. It's got the eyepiece on. Uh, you've focused it downrange, have you? It's focused. So you're, We're you're back in the right version of the software. We're back in the, the scope mode right. uh, software. And it's focused, is it, on the air brick? It's focused on or those the wall, air, rather. The, the, those bricks in the wall, yep. Yep. Um, and you're recording. I'm recording. So we'll see how the footage looks. Aye. And compared I'll, to I'll the. Run it, um, base, I'm in base magnification at the moment. Um, and that's times two. Oh, excuse the helicopter going over, viewers. Times four. Times eight. So, I mean, in base magnification, remember the base magnification of this. In scope mode is only about what 1.6 or something something like that yeah so it's going to, it's a lower magnification image and you're getting with it in add-on mode at times three yeah so the target looks a little bit smaller yeah um perhaps slightly better defined but yeah right so right the reticle's back the on inverted t with the dot in the middle that's right. a reticle i've got switched on cool okay um i like that dot that dot is a single pixel yeah 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 and it oh, but in times one mag I'm having difficulty seeing that single dot on the white air brick. Okay. So go to times two then maybe? And times two it's a little bit easier to see. Right. Because that's because it's 53 metres away, the air brick. Yeah. I was zeroing this fella at the club at 25 metres yeah. and I could see that single yeah. pixel easily. Yeah. yeah. So I would say really on with this on times two is essentially similar to what we're having with the scopes and front add-on mode at their base magnification times three, three times so one times one point six three point two so we're on the same ball yeah that was four point eight times combined yeah and this is uh two this uh, is three point two times yeah combined. i mean i mean if, I, if we were again if we're comparing that air brick with a bunny you you could shoot the bunny in any of the four scope mark you know you could do it in i could you could shoot it in times one yep Times two, times four, times eight. You can shoot it in any of them. Right, okay. I would say. But the yeah. clarity is better at times. I would say mag. times two would be optimum. Right. For oh, shooting them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just a little bit bigger target. No much, not that much loss of detail. And in, in this particular reticle, that little single pixel dot is easier to see in times two than it is in times one. At 48, at uh, 53 meters. 53 meters. I found zero in it at, four, at 25 meters. When I had a, when I shot pellets mm. into my sheet of MDF at the range, the um, pellet strikes were glowing at 25 meters. Okay. And at base mag, the black single black pixel dot showed up nicely against okay. those pellet strikes. Okay. Yeah. So it was it was easy yeah. to yeah. zero. Yeah. And now yeah. that we've established how tight these two M5 screws have to be, I'm not going to get any zero shift. Black hot, just as good. I mean, no problem shooting in black hot. Okay. Um, I, again, the 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 Atchison Rainbow or Fusion, as they call it, the air brick is glowing a white, bright yellow. The the background behind it is a kind of dark red. Purple can you make color. out? Can you make out the the? I know the crosshair will be on it anyway, but can you make out the difference between the the hard bricks and the hard? Surface? Yeah, believe it or not, I can. Oh right, right okay. I can see a line. I can yep, see okay. a line between the 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 white Harlan and the and the brickwork below that. Right. Not phenomenally distinct. The and if you put it on the last mode, red highlights, that's horrible for me. Oh, I don't like that. Because, because I don't like it anyway in general, but I find on this lower res entry-level thermal scope, got, it gets very pixelated. Well, the red is, has is that right? I've got in, it in, in spotter mode anyway. For me, it was pixelated. I've got, I've got it in red hot now, and the centre of the air brick is glowing red. The outer part of the air brick is white, and the wall behind it is dark. Oh, right, nice one. So it's actually it's actually working up there. Yeah. I'm not I'm not a lover of that red hot. Profile. Can, can I come in? Yeah, have a look that. at that. Have a look at that. <laughs> Obviously, the the um, the Hick Micro is recording right now. Anyway, so I'll be able to see this footage. But I'm going to put the 
phone up to it and magnify it a bit and ah see what you mean so whoops there we go that's that's the right mag so okay yes yeah, so it's differentiating between the center of the air brick and the outside edge that's so the first time i've seen some with that red hot i thought oh, that's quite good otherwise i'm thinking wait <laughs> and that, that hot track mode i never use that no no never never that's Thanks again for watching everyone. We surprised ourselves by proving that this uh, entry level thermal scope is quite a good uh, front end thermal add on for any day scope. First focal plane or second, out to decent considerable um, FAC air rifle ranges and rimfire ranges. So uh, yep, yeah, brilliant. We were we were very happy with the conclusion to this test and we were pleasantly surprised by this uh, Hike Micro T19C's performance. More to come soon. See you soon. Cheers.